gun. It's not an understatement to say that guns are cool. It's real cool. <laughs> Since the dawn of time, man has always been fascinated on shooting shit with whatever the fuck. And I'm no exception. Since a young kid, I always played with airsoft. But as I got older, my interest in guns dwindled. And then video games started filling up my time. And I started playing a lot more arcade games than I should have. And one of my favorite ones were the shooting genres. I'm talking about the ones with the light guns. I spent hours and hours in the arcade just playing games like Terminator 2, House of the Dead. You've come. Friends, the door of fate shall open. I've been waiting for you, friends. And other ones that slipped my mind, that I can't really think of. So as the years progressed, the popularity died down of the light gun genre. And also, it didn't help that the HDTV came around that time, which didn't support the motherfucker. It has to do with the screen, um, the, with the TV itself. It has to be CRT. Um, and that is simply because of the time delay. Cementing the fact that the light gun genre was gone for good. Many tried to keep it alive with emulations. But the same thing, the computer just wasn't ready. Hey yo, what's up? It's James. I'm here coming at you with the history lesson. Not an original one. It's just something I copied off of Wikipedia because I thought it was cool. So we're going to talk about the history of the light gun game genre and how it became. Well, just like pinpointing who started coronavirus, predating who started the light gun craze is a bit confusing to pinpoint. But the earliest records of man enjoying shooting things as a natural passing time surely dates back 200,000s of years back. As our earliest ancestors wanted to prove who could get the sickest no scopes. And as humanity progressed, so did the sport of hunting. In ancient Egypt, the huntsman was considered a social class. They hunted on their own as well as attended the hunting of the nobles. Then, later, the craze would spread to Great Britain and many other countries as well. This is where you could say when the concept of shooting guns transitioned from a blood sport into a novelty in shooting galleries as a carnival game. Dating way back in the late 19th centuries, around the turn of the 20th century, mechanical gun games made their first appearance in the amusement arcades spreading across England, much like Scarlet Fever at the time. Then in the year 1912, when cinematography was at its infancy, a British company created Cinematic Shooting Galleries, a mechanical interactive film game with life targets, where players shoot at a cinematic screen, displaying film footage of targets. And then soon, appearing in America by the 1920s, a concept that would later evolve into interactive rail shooters in amusement park rides like the ones you see on Disneyland. Almost about Ten years later. The first light gun started appearing in the 1930s, more accurately in 1936, with the Seaberg's cabinet game called Ray O'Light. Seaberg was a company with an engineering department focused on the design of vacuum tube amplifiers and gearing systems for jukeboxes. No surprise when the electric eye light sensing vacuum tube was introduced back in the early 1930s that the Seaberg design team would introduce a coin-operated light ray game. Seaberg was the first out with the ray of light. This game featured a flying duck with a light sensing tube that would drop the duck when you shot it with the rifle which produced a beam of light when the trigger was pulled. After years of making jukeboxes, Seaberg knew how to build quality veneer wooden cabinets. 
It was one of the first of many games using this toy rifle, where a mechanical rifle fired beams of light at a target wired with sensors. A later gun game from the same company, being the Seabird Corporation, they released another coin-operated gun game called Shoot the Bear in 1949, introducing the use of mechanical sound effects. Skipping ahead of time to the psychedelic 60s, mechanical gun games have now evolved into shooting electromechanical games. The use of a mounted gun dates back to a midway mechanical game in the 1960s. During this arcade boom, you now had adrenaline inducing games like Periscope, Captain Kid Rifle, and Arctic Gun just to name a few. Between the late 1960s and the early 1970s, Sega produced gun games which resembled the first person light gun shooter video games but were in fact electromechanical games that used rear image projections in a manner similar to Zoetrope to produce moving animations on screen. At the time, it was a fresh approach to the gun game that Sega introduced with Duck Hunt, which began local testing in 1968 and released in January 1969. It has animated moving targets which disappear from the screen when shot solid state electronic sound effects, and a high score for headshots. It also printed out the player's score on the ticket, and the sound effects were volume controllable. Now this shit right here, this shit right here, this shit was the future. I can only imagine how the people fucking reacted when this shit came out back in the 1960s. Throughout the 1970s, electromechanical arcade games were rapidly replaced by electric video games. Following the release of shit like Pong in 1972, and the mind expanding games like 1978 Space Invaders, making their inevitable debut giving a Houdini sucker punch to the already dying popularity of electromechanical games. And this is the part where we finally see the beautiful transition from those yucky, boring, electric mechanical hybrid guns to the more sophisticated, elegant, Chinese plastic guns that every nerd has in their arsenals today. Light guns used in electric video games work in an opposite manner to their mechanical counterparts. The sensors in the gun and pulling the trigger allows it to receive light from the on-screen targets. Computer light pins have been used for practical purposes at MIT in the early 1960s. The Magna Vox Odyssey home video game console in 1972 had a light gun accessory in the production of which Nintendo was involved. In the arcades, light gun shooter video games appeared in 1974 with Sega's balloon gun in August and Atari's Quack in November. The use of a mounted gun in arcade video games date back to Titles, Attack in 1976. But sadly, light gun video games were not able to achieve the same level of success as their earlier electrical mechanical predecessors until the mid 1980s. Light gun video games became popular in arcades with the Nintendo vs. System arcade releases of Duck Hunt and Hogan's Alley, both which were released in 1984, with Duck Hunt also becoming popular in home consoles following its 1985 Nintendo Entertainment System release. Giving a massive boost to the popularity of the light guns in the mid-1980s. In the late 1980s, Taito's arcade hit Operation Wolf that released in 1987 popularized military theme light gun rail shooters. Operation Wolf had scaling backgrounds which Taito's sequel Operation Thunderbolt and also Sega's Line of Fire took inspiration from Operation Wolf and added pseudo 3D backgrounds using Sega's Superscaler arcade technology. 
allowing to feature a two-player co-op gameplay. SNK's Beast Buster in 1989 supported up to three players, and 1991's Terminator 2 Judgment Day combined Operation Wolf scaling with Operation Thunders and Life of Fire's two-player co-op along with the use of realistic digitalized sprite graphics. In Konami's Lethal Enforcer further popularized the use of realistic digitized sprite graphics in the light gun shooters, with digitized sprites remaining popular in the genre up until mid-1990s. Sega's Virtual Cop, released in arcades in 1994, broke new ground, popularized the 3D polygons in shooter games, and led a renaissance in the popularity of arcade gun games. Like Lethal Enforcers, the game was inspired by Clint Eastwood's film Dirty Harry, as well as a coffee advertisement in which a can of coffee grew larger in a gun's sight. In Virtua Cop, the player had to shoot an approaching target as fast as possible. The classic Time Crisis by Namco released for Japanese arcades in 1995, introducing innovations such as simulated recoil and a foot pedal which when pressed caused the protagonist to take cover, and ported for Sony's PlayStation consoles in 1996 and 1997. The game's light gun controller, the GameCon, was also acclaimed and really popular. In 1995, Atari Games released the classic banger, Area 51, which featured red and blue HAP 45 caliber pistol-like light guns and the use of full motion video pre-rendered graphics. This shit was fucking intense. Some games attempted to incorporate elements of first-person shooters and survival horror games through the use of less restricted character movements and exploration. One of my personal favorites among them being Resident Evil Survival 2 Code Veronica, which for some reason had Nemesis chasing you across the whole fucking game. What was that about? Between 1996 and 1997, 3D light gun games gained more considerable popularity in arcades. Popular arcade light gun shooter games at the time included Sega's Virtual Cop 2, The House of the Dead, Namco's Time Crisis, and Police Trainer. The most successful light gun horror game series is House of the Dead, which released in 1997. The popularity along with Capcom's Resident Evil led to zombies becoming mainstream again in pop culture. In 1998, Midway released their third successful light game gun called Card Evil, which featured over-the-top black comedy humor. The use of a shotgun light light gun, which pumped to reload, and the use of blood and gore like Mortal Kombat, some of which had curtains to hide from kids. Black guns were suppressed for a time in the United States after 1999 Columbine High School Massacre and the attendant controversy over video game and gun crime. Since the late 1990s, light gun controllers have been generally manufactured look like toys by painting them bright colors. And in Japan, which lacks the gun crime found in the United States and its civilians cannot legally own a gun, more realistically, light guns were widely available. Light gun rail shooters began declining in the late 1990s as FPS games became more popular. Light gun shooters became less popular in the 2000s, with new games in the genre seen as old school. Still, the Time Crisis and House of the Dead franchises continue to release future installments, some of which I remember playing as a middle schooler, especially the ones with enclosing rooms with large screens as well as having swiveling, vibrating chairs. In the year 2000, Incredible Technologies and Play Mechanics released Big Buck Hunter, which was highly successful and spawned a number of sequels and console ports. Sega also released Ghost Squad in 2004, another successful light gun shooter that uses unique machine guns with realistic recoil and had the additional trigger 
that actions things like surrender hostages or cut the correct wire on the bomb. The game was updated as Ghost Squad Evolution in 2007 and was ported to the Wii in 2007-2008 and was compatible with the Wii Zapper at the time. And it seemed like Nintendo did try to revive the scene with the inclusion of the Wii Zapper with supporting games like Resident Evil 4 and a couple of rail shoot. Others, however, unashamedly paid homage to the 1990s arcade gameplay, even embracing a somewhat periodic style. Light guns are not compatible with modern high-definition TVs, leading developers to experiment with hybrid controllers, particularly the Wii Remote for the Nintendo Wii, as well as the PlayStation 3's GunCon 3 peripheral used with Time Crisis 4. Others have to use the PlayStation Move motion control system. Well, since the worldwide adoption of the HD television, the world slowly has forgotten about the marvelous wonders of standing and aimlessly shooting at a flickering box for minutes on end. For many, it was an undesirable way to pass the time. But to the few who saw it as an immersive escape while bleeding quarters into them, it was more than just an escape. It was something different that was out there initially. But there is hope for the comeback of the beloved genre, but just like its predecessor, evolving from just a gallery shooter, it's only natural that the light gun has to evolve to a new futuristic product that appeals to the mass, younger audience. Alright, cue the motion sensors and VR headsets. Bring them out. After passing Nintendo's latest release of House of the Dead on the Nintendo Switch, it sort of begged the question, what the hell happened to the light gun game genre? and wonder if it was making a comeback. While playing House of the Dead on the Nintendo Switch, I tried treating the Joy-Con like a little tiny gun pointing at the TV, and it felt pretty funny in a way. But still, the issue was the controller was really clunky, and the constant recalibration crippled the experience. During the last decade, we have seen a surge of virtual reality devices, and with the PS5 coming out with the new rendition of the lackluster PS4 VR, the virtual shooting space seems to be the next evolution of simulated shooters. Even though we left behind the childish plastic toy guns for tiny motion sensor controllers, I have no doubt that sometime in the near future, the light gun game genre will make a comeback, albeit with a new name on its back. Alright, later.